Welcome to my kitchen. I'm Arden. This is the food I eat. Today I'm going to make pineapple apple stuffed pumpkin bake. So first I'm going to start with washing some Granny Smith apples and then also the pumpkin which I'm going to scrub with a brush. You want to make sure that you scrub your pumpkin with a brush and get the whole thing even though you're not intending to eat the skin just in case it bursts open which this dish can have a tendency to do. The great thing about this dish is that all these ingredients are available for fall and it makes a great dessert. So you're basically going to pretend with your pumpkin, if you've never done this before, that you are carving it. So I want to cut at an angle around my top so that I can put it back on. So now you want to de-seed your pumpkin. And you can take a spoon and just uh, scrape out the insides. Get the seeds and the strings out. So the great thing about this dish is you can also make another one. Bake your own pumpkin seeds. So save them. Generally, if you give the stringy flesh a little bit of a squeeze, the seeds that you want will pop out. And once you get those all cleaned off, you can set them aside for baking with salt and seasoned spices later. You want to get your pumpkin pretty much clear of all the strings because you're going to eat it. So you don't want the strings in there. So this is now going to become my cooking bowl. But just in case it explodes, like it might do, I'm going to set it inside another round bowl. So now I'm going to peel my apples and then I'm going to cube them. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the core out of my apple and then cube it. And I've started with four apples here. Depending on the interior of your pumpkin, you may only want three. You don't want to go beyond about three quarters of the way full of your pumpkin. So I'm going to cut the top and the bottom off. Now I'm going to slice off the sides. And you only need about a cup of pineapple. Alright, so I want about a tablespoon of minced fresh ginger. butter here and I'm just going to cut it into slices so that I can distribute it evenly across the top once I have my pumpkin filled. And in general I have a tendency to eyeball things and never really measure. Um, but if you want to measure you want about a teaspoon of salt and about a teaspoon of uh, ground cinnamon. And I want half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So I put my ginger in there and I'm getting my spices coated on it just to make life a little easier. And now I'm going to fill my pumpkin. So you want it to be about three quarters of the way full and because I never really know how cavernous the inside of my pumpkin is, uh, these are just suggested amounts for what you want to go inside. I'm going to start with my apple chunks, put a layer of those in, put in a layer of my pineapple, Ooh. sprinkle in some raisins, I'm going to add in some walnuts, and my ginger and spices. along with a little bit of lemon juice. Give it a stir. Now if you wanted to, you could stir all of your ingredients into a bowl before putting it into the pumpkin. So now I'm just going to put my butter on the top. And 
you should have preheated your oven to 325 degrees. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do before I put the top on this is give it a little squeeze of honey. Again, here too, if you're pre-mixing everything in a bowl or you want to know specific amounts, about a quarter of a cup. Now I'm going to put my top back on. put it in the oven. Not on the bottom rack so that the bottom of your pumpkin burns. Center it up. Whenever you end up with too many ingredients for whatever recipe you're working with, that's okay. Just set them aside. Use them later in another dish. So I went ahead and squeezed a whole lemon and I'm going to stick the rest of this in my fridge for the next time I want to use it. So I decided since I cut up two more apples than what I needed and I had a lot of extra fresh pineapple. I went ahead and put the lemon juice on top of the apple and I put the pineapple on top of it and I'm just going to give them a sprinkle of nutmeg and cinnamon and then go ahead and stick it in the oven um, on the lowest shelf underneath my pumpkin and I will have a whole extra treat for some other time. Okay, so once you get your pumpkin seeds thoroughly washed and de-stringed, you just want to let them dry overnight, and then tomorrow you can season them however you wish, and bake them. This has been a three hour tour. It should have been a one hour tour. Just because you can easily puncture it with a fork doesn't mean that you can scoop it out with a spoon, which is what you really want to be able to do with your pumpkin on the inside. So, I'm going to gently remove my top. And you'll see everything has kind of cooked into almost a soup. I've stirred it every time I have checked it. I can scoop the pumpkin out with the rest of the fruit. And so that's when you know that you're really done and it's ready to eat. So bon appetit!